Okay, so uh, first of all, <clears throat> kind of a summary of, of yesterday's and today's discussion. So uh, making an application for authorization is, is a strategic choice and uh, it is a core business decision for companies to make. And essentially the question is to ask yourself first, what would you do if you did not have the Annex 14 substance uh, uh, available to you any longer? And I think what, what Linda Jean and the others were saying was exactly that question that is not thought through necessarily from the whole company point of view. And, and, uh, and that's important to, to build that understanding and says, shall we go for it or not? Uh, so the applicants need to decide on the strategy to develop and submit the application for authorization. And this is likely to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no panacea on this one. Uh, in particular, the applicants need to consider thoroughly uh, and well in advance for which uses to apply, what routes uh, would be most uh, likely to be used, uh, whether or not to collaborate when developing the application. And here, I think the jury is really out. Uh, there are very many different ways of collaboration, and, and uh, some are contract-based, contract some are less contract-based, and so on. So that and building the trust within your supply chain, with your, with your sort of competitors or whoever are in the same situation, that seems to be varying a lot depending on, on which country you are in or which sort of sector you are in and so on. And then obviously whether you apply or not jointly. There seems to be a pattern almost that there's a lot of collaboration going on, but then application will actually be separately made. Uh, but that's, that's sort of what I see as a trend at the moment. Um, a strong case probably means an easy application. So if the substance clearly adds value, so then uh, and the remaining risks are small, you should have a fairly easy, easy, uh, easy time to, to write the document. Good communication within and outside the supply is crucial. We've, I think that comes through in the discussions yesterday and today. Um, and how to establish that is obviously the, the um, in some cases difficult because there's no tradition and if you have that tradition it's much easier to do so. Um, and similar actors outside your supply chain could provide important information, uh, they probably will. And there might be an interest of working jointly on at least some aspects, uh, at least uh, the use definitions, obviously, the, um, the, the risks that are at least the, the hazard part, if there's any need to, to work on there, even the, the exposure parts to the extent the uses are similar. Um, obviously, it's easy to say, but of course, it's important to repeat this every time, start early. Uh, and I think... It was Hugo who said it, how early you should start. It's maybe best to start at the RMO stage before even the candidate list has been established. <clears throat> what is your strategy in case uh, it comes to the candidate list? What is your strategy it comes, comes to Annex 14? And especially look at the analysis of alternatives and therefore the socioeconomic impacts as well early and, and, uh, and uh, develop your strategy that way. Uh, build on existing knowledge. Uh, applicants should, uh, of course, build on existing information. It doesn't make, I mean, there usually is a lot of information that ha has been collected already and it's just a matter of gathering that information uh, for, uh, first. Um, then it's again easier to say than to, to, to do, but try not to overcomplicate your, your life. Uh, for instance, the role of monetization and the impacts is, it can be, in some quarters at least, over, overplayed. I'm an economist and actually did, did my PhD on valuation, so I'm underplaying that part now. <laughs> but uh, but it, is, uh, it is important to be able to show, from your point of view, the applicant's point of view, the costs, if not the authorization is, is coming, if authorization is not coming, would be sort of high, meaning the benefits of the authorization would be high, and the risks, uh, if the authorization are, is given, are relatively low. And that demonstration is, of course, the crucial part of the whole, whole exercise. And you can use contextual information uh, and comparisons as well. You don't have to do the monetization if, if you don't have the information. Sharing even preliminary experiences would be quite helpful uh, for those who are totally new in the authorization process. Uh, and that's, we have discussed this every now and then, uh, that's where also the consultants become important because consultants do accumulate information. And they might, the more and more they, they see things, they can relatively inexpensively uh, give their experience uh, because they've seen it all, in a sense, whereas applicants are always a bit new to this process and therefore they can learn from the consultants, for instance, in, in, a, in, a, in a 
cost-effective way uh, things. Also, obviously, in these seminars and, and, and uh, workshops, there are places to share information as well. Um, confidentiality. Uh, what is really confidential? Um, we see very little confidential information that is crucial for the committees. So most most of the confidential, confidential information that we are getting is just corroborating what, what is already in the application. So you can use ranges, for instance, instead of an exact number. Uh, and, and that should be quite okay. I mean, for instance, market share. If you don't want to say they have 33% market share, you can say we have between 30 and 40% market share, if that's okay for you. I mean, that's, that gives an order of magnitude, which might be just, just as good. Or if you don't want to say exact tonnage, you can say the range, as an example. So, so it's just... Um, use confidential information, of course, if it is necessary, but, uh, but minimize it um, to, the, to the bare essentials. Um, because transparency is extremely important for the trustworthiness of the whole process uh, and efficiency of the process as well. Um, the access, because remember, we do get and have received an access to document request uh, for some applications, and that creates to us and to the applicant, of course, a huge uh, uh, workload. And in one particular case, we actually in court uh, because the applicant designed this particular case, thought that they would not uh, want to release information which we b we believe is cannot be confidential, and it has to do with exposure. Um, and I would think exposure information cannot be claimed confidential, but that's the, what the court case is about. Um, and of course, in this sense, it's good that we have the court case because then. Uh, that will be settled by the court if, if it's not otherwise settled. Um, obviously, if you're making confidentiality claim, you should justify it, why it, is, why it should be confidential. So it makes our lives easier than if we get an ATD request, for instance, access, access to documents request. Follow-up. Um, please notify applications, <coughs> request for PHIS. That's encouraged. The earlier you tell us, the better. And I think the the... Uh, slide that Pete showed to you about the incoming applications. It's in our interest and the applicant's interest to know when these are coming so we can prepare ourselves, the committees can prepare themselves, and obviously the applicants will again then get uh, the, the right amount of time uh, to, to afford that the committees are, are then evaluating the applications correctly. Um, we have a lot of information which we've gone through and, and uh, the newest step-by-step -step, uh, slide that Sana has been doing, I hope, we hope is, is going to be helpful. Um, then I would hope, uh, almost more than hope, I would really ask you to sign up for the partner service. Um, it's, it's, it's not used unless you use it. And if you don't, if you think it's not valuable to put your name there, then I think we'll just cut it down. So if we don't get 50 more people uh, signing up to it in the next week, we'll probably take it off the web because there's no point of having a system that nobody uses. It's just a drag for us. So can I get you to uh, nod? Yes, we will do so. <laughs> okay. Uh, just just to get the numbers up, and then after that, it's, it's going to be probably easier to use afterwards. So that's my part. Uh, I want to like to thank you for everybody, in particular the presenters, Hugo and Erwin, uh, for, for your active uh, role again here to make this uh, seminar very uh, enjoyable. And uh, where's Ilse? Ilse over here for organizing this in particular with Elina. And, and uh, uh, I hope that if you... I think they are allowed to eat over here. Yes. So we have a cafeteria or a restaurant up here. So if you want to stay for a lunch, paid by yourself, yourselves, uh, so you can, you, can, you can do so. We can show you where it is. Okay. But thank you very much for coming. And uh, I wish you a very nice summer and a good journey back home. Thank you.